In Uganda, Africa, a people's voice is crying out for help. This is the story of responding to that need. This is the story of answering the cry of injustice. My mom was not all having very much money. She told me that my father died in a war. And I become sad. And we had, we had nothing to eat. He, she gets food from friends. It, she doesn't work. And even no school fees. And afterwards, my mom my mom died. I was, I was, I was orphaned. Am I not, am I not for What? No. As you take a bus ride through Kampala, Uganda, through the crowded intersections with no traffic lights, past thousands of vending shacks, you emerge out onto the open dirt roads, and soon you arrive at Kanda village. The dust is red and covers everything. The boda boda zip by carelessly. The children scream mzungu as you drive by. This is Africa. This is raw. There's no hiding the rough edges here. This isn't exactly the kind of place you'd expect to find hope. Hope Children's Home is one of the outreaches of Show Mercy International. It's located about five miles outside the city limits of Kampala. It cares for about 100 abandoned or orphaned children. Amidst the streets of Ghana Village, Hope Children's Home is known as Paradise. A lot of the children that we come in contact with are living in conditions that are absolutely deplorable. They're living, if they're lucky, they have a shelter. They have a dirt floor to sleep on, no bed. Um, they're malnourished. Most of them don't even get a meal a day. And they're filling their be bellies on, on water that's not clean, that's getting them sick. I mean, they're, the kids that we're dealing with here are in some of the most incredibly horrible conditions. Before I came here, I was having one meal a day. Cassava. I used to get malaria because we did not have nets. I had no shoes. I had no mattress. I had to work on empty stuff. Then, then those stepfathers and stepmothers started to mistreat me, denying me food and shelter, leaving, leaving, leaving me outside at night. I was sleeping under the trees, beating me and howling, having nothing. I had no hope, no future. I was just praying to God just to take me. And I, I, was, I was upset, and I said to myself, God, why am I suffering like this? Then I was saying to myself, why am I suffering like this? I had no school fees. I was going to school, but they was not paying. And, and in the whole class, the headmaster would come and, and say that I'm him, you stand up and go out. Of all the tragedies occurring in Africa, the AIDS pandemic, the violence, the famines. Nowhere is the aftermath more apparent than at an orphanage, such as Hope Children's Home. These are the faces of children who have watched their families cut down by machetes in front of them. These are the faces of children who are abandoned and thrown into pit latrines. These are the faces of the forgotten. Uganda is an unforgiving place for the weak and for the poor. There's no safety net here. The regard for human life is sometimes trivial. The needs here, the extreme scope of the hardships is overwhelming. But this is nothing new to our ears. For years we have been inundated with the bleak and hopeless news reports from Africa. The famines, the ravaging effects of the AIDS virus, the civil wars, the mind-boggling bloodshed. But amidst all these hardships, we began to wonder, is there any hope to make a difference in Africa? All you have to do is turn on your TV set, turn on the radio, turn on the internet, and, and you can see every negative thing that's out there. The numbers just seem so huge. Where are the stories of success? 
Perhaps we don't see them because we're looking for them in the wrong place. Maybe change in Africa is going to come in the form of one person reaching out and helping another. What we've found, even for ourselves, is if we can just focus on one child at a time, encourage others to, to take action with one child at a time, and to realize that good things are happening, you kind of get a momentum and you realize, hey, we can do this and something is happening and God is doing something. And so I'm here to tell you that yes, there's a lot of people here that need help, but all we're required to do is to reach out to the one that God puts in front of us. You can look at the need sometimes and you can think, my gosh, it's, it's overwhelming. The scale of the need is overwhelming, but you're making a difference for this one and making a difference for this one and making a difference for this one. Every once in a while, one of the kids comes up to you and tells you a story that just totally wrecks you and makes you realize this is why I'm doing this. But one of the many little kids that we sponsor here personally came up to me as we were getting ready to leave. And he said to me, before you came here, there used to be many visitors that would come into this village and they would be in their buses and they would be in their cars and they would, they would drive by and they would just wave at me and I would wave back. But he said, you were the first visitor that ever stopped. You were the first one that ever came up and gave me a hug. You were the first one that actually took time to talk to me, to try and communicate with me. And then he said, not only that, before you came, I was living in the dirt and I had no clothes and I had bugs under my fingers and in my toes because I was digging for food. But you've taken me in and you've given me a bed, you've given me clothes, you've given me food, and best of all, you've given me love. And then he said to me, I am now like a king's kid. And that just totally ruined me and I realized something as small as a bed, as a hug, as a little bit of my time stopping to let him know that he was worth something. He has a dream, he has passion, and he, best of all, can turn to Jesus and know that Jesus is real and that nothing is impossible for him now. So how can I turn away now that everything got a love from my from my father I pray to God that God bless your mercy God bless your mercy very much because me I don't have anything to give to give your mercy but God the big the big God can reward you can reward you all God bless your mercy because I had made my life hopeful I had I could not have hope at all but I'm now having hope I'm now praying that I'm a big man I will be a big man God fearing man and I pray that God I will not leave your side If I could say one thing to people at home I would say would you please look outside of yourself and would you look at the rest of the world and would you realize that you have the ability to change a life? You do. It's not somebody else, it's you. You have that opportunity. Please don't neglect that. Fall like the rain, shine like the sun.